The Open RW project, also known as the Grand Theft Auto 3 reverse engineer or re-implementation, is an infamous uh, open source project that was actually under some controversy um, due to copyright because as you can see, this is a very, very well done um, implementation and the games look almost identical. Basically what happened was this uh, company Take Two sued the developers of this uh, reverse engineer, but later they dismissed uh, the lawsuit. Uh, this all happened in 2021 actually. Yeah, the repo is now still open source uh, on GitHub and that is the repository that I've been looking into and it's been extremely useful for helping me rewrite my own game engine and that's what I'll show you in this video. What helped me the most was GTA 3's rendering engine because what I had before was I had a while loop that was like pretty much a monolithic mess. Um, it had all the rendering stuff, it had the physics thread kind of uh, communicating there, it had um, all the SDL stuff, the windowing, there was all of the uh, like resources right here, matrices, indices for models, it was absolutely a mess and basically what I what I wanted to do is in the main while loop of the game quote unquote there would be one kind of just render function as you can see here um, now what I have is I have a while loop and you just render one time that's it and it does all of this right so um, when I was looking at GTA 3 rewrites engine uh, for rendering they do a they do basically what I wanted, and they have a kind of a cool pipeline, so I can explain that real quick. Basically, uh, here in engine, uh, in render, we have all the specific logic for rendering, and the game is giving the renderer the world. So here, take the world and render whatever's in it. So the game renderer is like, okay, so I'm gonna um, need all the instructions for these entities and I need you to provide them object render so then the object render will get that and it's like okay every um, object that you need rendered it will just look at the instance of the object because it'll pass it in so I need this object that object in the for loop and render this instance and it'll add it to the draw list the out list the draw list same thing right what's a really great benefit of this is different objects narrowly have different kind of ways that they need to be rendered like a pedestrian needs more animations whereas like a uh, static plane just needs to be kind of the same and simple so based on that the the instruction will reflect that and um it can just build some robust instructions that will do specifically what the render what the game renderer knows how to do and so every object can have their own specific kind of config so vertex configure vertex specification, um, and then also ordering of draws. So like, would we draw on top of what? <laughs> okay. So this list is built here, right? Builds the list, and then those instructions are sent back up the line to game renderer, and then so game renderer will have basically the function to like iterate through all of them and render their instructions. So. Um, in my in mind you can just see right here game renderer very very simple um it just does some kind of opengl stuff renders objects and those objects that need to be rendered are just um instructions in the draw list and then it'll just draw whatever instruction it needs to like the geometry and it'll draw the geometry um which is just all of the OpenGL specific stuff that I have in, in core, right? So the geometry draw method over here. And then, yeah, so this will be up the pipeline. So then now at this point, we will have all the objects drawn, the map, the water, map includes um, the skybox. And it's actually important to note that um, the higher level renderers like map renderer and the water renderer just uh, use the actual OpenGL abstractions directly and they have the shaders baked in as just character arrays um, and the GL API commands are just done within the component because it's more complex and it's more 
use case specific for the renderer, so it's better to just have it as one cohesive file for map renderer, uh, water renderer, and some of the other stuff like text and stuff. In terms of the actual application and windowing aspect, I also followed their design of having a game window with the kind of um, SDL specific setup for just, you know, desktop windows at the size and then, you know, setting up the, the SDL attributes and then having the game inherit the window to have all of that basically um, abstracted away, but still accessible. And then having, um, you know, the SDL polling and uh, IO stuff within the game, as well as having um, the I'm GUI setup and other kind of game specific stuff while keeping the really the raw window abstracted. That was a really nice pattern I like from them. And then in terms of having the game world, I just modeled my simple prototype as a vehicle and some landscape, right? Keep it simple, two objects just for a proof of concept uh, of the game. And okay, so here are some just clips of me driving around in the game. Um, as you can see, I have a chunking system that I will discuss later. But essentially, it's just me driving around and I'm following the car with some different controls in like uh, in free cam mode. So um, in, in the future, you'll see better physics, um, better camera, better shaders, right? Because now I use uh, object files for the maps, so I have normal data. And yeah, thank you for watching.